All right, let's continue 6.2a. We have completed the high-low method. Now we're going to do a scatter graph for this data. So uh, to do a scatter graph, I mean, it's very helpful to have graph paper or something resembling graph paper. But you can just do it on, like, lined notebook paper, and it would just be fine. So um, we just want to graph this data. Remember, the y-axis is always going to be our cost. In this case, it's our shipping cost. And the x-axis is going to be our activity level. And in this case, that's the number of packages shipped. So something I like to do is I like to sort of measure up my axis. So I know on the number of packages shipped, the maximum number is 130. I also know I've made a 20 line, uh, like there's 20, it's a 20 by 20 grid. I'm actually going to just take the first 13, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I'm just going to say each one of these is 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 110, 120, and 130, and that's all I'm going to need. Um, now, the reason I do this, and I, I'm a bit painstaking about it, is sometimes you'll see graphs published in newspapers, and it'll like look like this, and they'll just do this little thing on the bottom, and then they'll say, like, you know, for example, this will be zero, this will be uh, 50,000, 51,000, 52,000, you know, and it's it's completely not to scale because they've knocked out a chunk of the scale here. What I'm saying in, in doing it this way is don't knock out a chunk of your scale. Like, look, I could start, you can see my lowest number is 90. So you could think, oh, why don't I just go like 90, 100? No, you cannot do that. Do not do that. Do not skip a piece of your scale. The reason is uh, we're trying to compute the slope of a line and we're trying to compute the intercept and it will screw up your answer if you choose to do that. So start from zero and don't skip any parts of your graph. Okay, uh, so uh, again, another place I'd be tempted to skip here is it starts at 1100. So why don't I go like zero, 1100, 1200, 1300. No, that's terrible. I got to start from 100. So in this case, I'll be able to do it 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300. How high do I have to go? Uh, looks like 1,500 is my high point. 1,400, 1,500. Okay, so there I've got sufficient room to graph this. Now let's graph it. So we'll start with January. 100, we, we don't use just the two high, high and low points. We use all the points. So 100, and, 100 is my number of package shipped. 1,200 is my shipping cost. So for January, maybe I'll change the color here to red. For January, it's 100 is the number of packages shipped. And 1,200 is my cost. So there we are. That's January. For February, 120 and 1300. Okay, 120 and 1300. There we are. For um, March, 125 and 1350. So halfway between 120 and 130, and halfway between 1300 and 1400. All right. Oop, what happened there? There we go. Oh, <laughs> supposed to be totally in the middle of that. Okay, that's as good as I'm going to do. Um, 130 and 1500 for the next one, 130 and 1500. And you can see it's not making really something linear here, right? It's it's a little bit all over the map. Uh, next, uh, 110 and 1400. 110 and 1400. Yeah, it's definitely all over the map. And uh, last, 90 and 1100. 90 and 1100. Okay. 
So there we are. Now we have to use this data to try and draw a line. We call it a line of best fit, uh, also called a visual inspection line. You can see the data is just kind of all over the map here, and we've got to try to draw a line through it. And we just want to draw a line that we think cuts through the heart of our data, cuts through the center of our data, and we have to draw it all the way back to the origin. I'm, I'm actually uh, right now just scanning the room for, for something straight <laughs> that I can kind of use as a ruler. I think I'm going to use this uh, like case here. Um, and so all we want to do is as best as we can, we want to draw a straight line that cuts through our data. And uh, okay, here's going to be mine. Wish me good luck, everybody. It's a little low. Try it again. See if I've learned any lessons here. That's better. Okay, I'll take it. That's going to be my line. So, uh, all right, we've done our line. I actually feel pretty happy about that line. Um, so I think that cuts through my data reasonably well, right? A couple of points are above, a couple of points are below, a couple of points are just about right on. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that uh, line. And it's straight, too, which usually my lines aren't. Um, okay. Now we've got two tasks. First task, pretty easy task. We have to determine the intercept. Where is this line intersecting with my Y, my vertical axis? And that's right here. So I would say it's just above 400. I'm going to say 410. So... Remember our formula is y equals mx plus b. We said b was our fixed cost or our intercept. Well, in this case, I'm going to say our b is 410. That's my estimate for b. You know, and it might be 405 or 403. You know, you could you could definitely estimate something different, but I'm going to say it's right around 410. It's above 400, uh, but way below halfway. The second point we need here. The second thing we're going to need to look at is we look at our line and we say, are there any points that my line really did a good job cutting through? So in other words, this point down here is way off from our line, right? It's, it's a ways off. This point up here is way off from our line. So are there any points that really fit our line? I would say this one fits it the best. This one's close, but this one fits it the best. So let's figure out what that point is. It's 100 and 1200 this point corresponds with oh with january 100 and 1200 so i'm just going to note that above i'm going to say okay this point is 100 and 1200 okay so what does that mean well i know at this point my x is 100 so i'll fill that in for x i filled in an amount for b and my y is 1200 so now I'm missing one number, right? Y equals mx plus b. Well, I have my x. I have my b. I have my y. I just don't have my m. So let's solve for m. So again, what do we have? We have 1,200 equals 100m. I just switched them around there, but that's fine. Plus 410. Subtract 410 from both sides. 1200 minus 410 equals 100m. 1200 minus 410. What is 1200 minus 410? It is uh, 790 equals 100m. M equals 790 over 100. M equals 7.9. No. <laughs> I mean, yes, 7.9. So my formula for a line here is y equals 7.9x plus, uh, what was my fixed cost? 410. Now, this produced a fairly different answer from my first one. I had y equals 10x plus 200. In this one, I said y equals 7.9x plus 410. Why are the answers so different? Well, if you think about what high-low method is doing, it's taking two data points. It's taking the high point and the low point, and that's it. 
Uh, the scattergraph method takes all of our data points. Uh, the so it's stronger in that sense. The weakness of the scattergraph method is, is it has the human element. I look at it, I use my ruler, and I drew the best line that I possibly could. Um, but it's got that human element. Uh, we're going to take a page from the scattergraph method with our next method called the least squares regression, but we're going to draw a regression line. And what a regression line does is it takes the human element out of it. It mathematically solves for the best possible line through the data. We'll do that in our next video.